Well, first of all, Alex, let's just uh, have a look over the weekend, of course. You're now preparing for your next fixture, of course, away to Hartlepool, but it was a, a weekend of respect shown for the passing of the, of the Queen, of course. Just as the football manager, do you think football missed out a trick in the way that they should, could have shown the respect, or do you think it was the right decision to call the games off? I can see both sides of the discussion, obviously. Football could have paid a tribute by the games continuing, obviously, with a mark of respect with black armbands and minutes applause and minutes silences. I think that would have been a fitting tribute to the Queen. But likewise, I also understand uh, the chain of thought from people in terms of wanting to cancel the games over the weekend because when the Queen passes, obviously, it's something that doesn't happen very often in terms of you losing your monarch. So. Um, by cancelling the games, it, it obviously is something that's out of the ordinary and that adequately reflects that something out of the ordinary has happened. So I can certainly see both sides of uh, the coin in terms of the, the debate that's gone on. I'm very much indifferent towards one or the other, as long as obviously respects are paid to her because of what she's done in terms of serving our country, then I'm more than happy with you know whatever choices were made and ultimately we, we didn't play a game of football and we move on. So it's, it's really not the end of the world. Just finishing it off, it's very, very rare that uh, you know the complete programme is called off uh, unless it's, it's weather, uh, usually. Is it a disruptive to, to, to planning and preparations for, for you as the manager and your coaches and your players? Um, disruptive is probably not the word, Graham. It, it, it just obviously throws you off kilt because you're used to your routines on a Friday building into a Saturday. I actually had the, the news with a call from the chairman. Uh, midway through standing in the middle of the pitch doing some team play linking into the game so I had to take the call in the middle of the pitch. Uh, the chairman obviously broke the news to me and then it was a case of calling the lads in from the 11, the 11 that they were, we were doing uh, to reset and do something else knowing that the weekend was then going to be an empty one. Um, but it, in this case it's certainly the same for every club isn't it so um, not disruptive just something different and you have to obviously prepare for every eventuality and we knew going into training on Friday that there was a possibility that call was going to come at any point during the morning so we were always ready obviously for what was coming next. So with a full week out on the training ground and an extra day or so as well to prepare, what's your up to date on, on, on the injury players like Calvin Mellon, Lachlan Brook and Rio Adebisi, where are you with those first of all? Yeah, Rio's going to be involved tomorrow night, uh, he's due to get some minutes in the under 23 game today but um, there's just a little bit of a niggly has there that isn't anything serious at all, but we don't want to disrupt that and obviously potentially flare up something that that uh, could occur as a result of playing today. So he's going to be um, saved until tomorrow, if you like, so that we've got an option from the bench with Rio. Uh, Lachlan Brute's coming along really quickly again. He'll be introduced into training the back end of this week um, with a view to, if not being on the bench against Crawley, certainly getting some minutes against Leeds in the um, Football League trophy. Uh, not so good news from uh, the Chris Long perspective, he's had another setback with the same ankle. He's got multiple um, grade one and grade two tears on that ankle, so he's going to be out for the foreseeable future, um, five, six weeks probably. Um, so again, you know, Chris Long's had a, such a frustrating time, we've not seen him at all this season, we've not lost him with this news because we've never had him. Um, and obviously the player club, teammates, supporters, it's hugely frustrating that again we, we don't get to see him for you know quite a, a medium term period to be honest. Just an update on Kelvin Miller and Michel last game, is, it, is he trading, is, is, is okay? Yeah, Kelvin's coming along nicely, he trained on Thursday and Friday, um, pulling him out of the game against uh, Stevenage was in hindsight the right thing to do because whilst there wasn't a tear there, there was severe stiffness and soreness and had he played then it could have led to a longer term injury with him so we, the, the medical team made the right decision in that respect and he'll be good to go and up for selection against Harlepool. A big big blow that Chris Long can't get going, there's no doubt about that, but just talking about the other two or three players that are coming back into the squad, for, from your point of view, finally a bit better strength in depth to choose from. Yeah, it's nice to obviously have you know, greater options from the bench. We've got obviously um, Lachlan and Rio to come into that and that makes a huge difference because they're senior players. Whilst they aren't senior in terms of age, they are in terms of, certainly in Rio's case, you know, first team appearances. And both of them give you options to play multiple positions whilst Rio can do both the full-back positions. He could also play higher up the pitch down the left, could Rio and off the right. And Lachlan could play any of those positions off the front. So. 
yeah, not only in, in terms of uh, numbers on the bench, but also options that those two provide across multiple positions. It, it certainly helps in terms of going into the latter stages of games when you're looking to either chase a game or to safeguard a game. So as you focus that attention now firmly on your next border call, which is Hartlepool, what are you looking for from your last game? That was a disappointing day for you in terms of your performance in certain areas of the time that you played and the results of what are you looking for to improve on from the Stevenage match? Look to win the game, look to win the game. We haven't won in the last three league games, albeit two have been draws and we were very close and one of them to winning. And obviously the most recent one we lost at Steve, we lost against Stevenage. So to win the game is ultimately the primary objective. That has to be the case. We're going to go there to try and win the game. Um, and also to put in a 90-minute performance, a 90-plus minute performance, because uh, we've put in some fantastic first-half performances, but the second-half performances have been weaker. We all know that. So that's the next step for this team, to ensure that we can put in a complete performance so that, obviously, the game looks more comfortable and more controlled in the second half. What do you think it is? <laughs> A bit daft question, really, because if you knew the answer straight away, you you put it right. It's significant, isn't it? That the, 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 the league games, first half, your fours and your pluses, and then the minuses in the second half. Has it got a bit of a mental thing now? That's it, well, it becomes more of a mental thing the more you ask questions about it, Graham, doesn't it, as well? <laughs> <laughs> I agree, I thought that as well. But I have to ask it. Yeah, but now joking aside, you have to ask those questions because it's quite obvious, isn't it, that we're very, very strong in first halves and uh, not so strong in second halves. And I think it's multiple things. It's definitely a mentality thing that the more often it happens, the more it becomes obviously a topic of conversation, which the players are aware of. Uh, I do think as well that our use of possession in the second half of games hasn't been as good as it needs to be. And we've done lots of work, both in terms of personnel and tactically this week to try and obviously eradicate that. And also with the fact that we spoke about already, squad depth, you, you can't make as many changes as perhaps you'd like uh, towards the back end of games, which does have a huge effect. You know, teams are making five substitutions against us regularly for it, at the very least, and we haven't done that. Um, so that comes into it as well. But ultimately, it comes down to me. I've got to find solutions to ensure um, that second halves look better than they do in the first half, myself and the management team. And if we don't do quickly, then I've got to look to you know, come up with plan B's and plan C's to make that happen. But over the course of this week, we feel that we've come up with lots of solutions to ensure that, you know, those sort of issues don't keep on recurring. There's no gimmies in football and, and people will have noticed that Hartlepool haven't started well at all. But they're in front of their home fans and they'll be thinking this is their next opportunity to get their first win on the board. You've got to be guarded against that and impose yourselves on the match. Yeah, there is no gimmies, absolutely. Whenever you go um, to any club, for an away game in this league, you're going to have to fight hard for the points. Um, whilst they've not had a good start, um, they've drawn two and lost one, haven't they, the first three home games, and they lost to Bradford 3-1. Um, that's just going to make them more determined to, to ensure that they do get off the mark, and we've got a guard against that. You don't get anything in football without working hard, and whilst on the face of it, we're coming up against a team that's only got three points on the board. We still know that it'll be a very difficult game, um, but we're going there with the expectation to win the game. We have to be, because if we have any aspirations of being where we want to be this season, um, we have to go to any team, not just Hartlepool, but any team with the, uh, the aspirations to win that game. And that's certainly what we'll do going into tomorrow night. You won't reveal what you talk to your players privately about the targets and where you are and what you're looking for, but you are moving close to that 10 match area that people usually say in football this is the first sort of time that they check out their clubs and see what's happening. Are you still on target, I'll use the word target, to get what you've set your players as, as the 10 game ma match approaches? Yeah, yeah, we've not set them targets in terms of uh, statistically, if you like, in terms of points and goals for and goals against because this team is very much one in transition. It's a new one. It's a team that's been put together off the back, as, as we all know, of something that wasn't particularly enjoyable last year with what everyone experienced. So the targets going into the first 10 games was to fulfil the potential and, and each player to, you know, meet their own standards, if you like, and then results look after themselves. But yes, once you get to 10 games, you can start to see where those aspirations need to lie going into the following 10 games. At 10 games, we'll look to see how well individuals have done, how well collectively the team's done, and also I'll look at, I've done well enough, and if after 10 games I don't feel 
I've done well enough then that it's really important that I take stock on that because ultimately I guide what happens next with the management team and the players. I'm probably more critical of myself than I am of the players and so 10 games in it allows us to have a review of everything and, uh, and see where we're at but obviously aspirations and objectives change for supporters, players and coaching staff as the season goes on, doesn't it? it whilst you want to be at a certain place at the start of the season, once 46 games are up, those expectations can change according to where you are in the table after 10, 15, 25 games. Um, so it's quite a fluid thing in terms of you know, where we're aiming for and you have to take those little benchmarks and 10 games in is the first one.